If you're worried about passing anatomy and physiology, I have compiled a list of my top tips and advice for passing anatomy and physiology with an A+. All of my study guides that I used when I was in the class are available on my website. I've linked that in the bio of this video, so go check that out if you're interested. But a quick little introduction, my name is Ali. I have a master's degree in molecular medicine, and I've been tutoring anatomy and physiology for about five years now. I got an A in undergrad, and I've also gotten an A in graduate school in anatomy. So in this video, I'm going to be covering five tips that help me get an A and how they will help you as well. So my first tip is that you do not want to copy down word for word everything from your textbook or your PowerPoint slides. A lot of people just genuinely don't really know how to take notes, and here's how I do it. So as you're going through your textbook or your lectures, you should be turning every slide heading or every subtopic in the textbook into a question. And you don't have to make the question right away. You can read through the information first before you decide what, what question am I answering here. So you'll go through your info under that section or on that slide, and you will only write down the information that would answer that question. Everything else is sort of fluff, and you should only write it down if your professor tells you to, or if they tell you it's going to be on the exam, or if it's high yield information. And then I personally refer to this as the Kevin Malone method, Whereas you try to write down as little amount of wordage as possible, if that's the best way to put it. So you can remove words like a, an, or the, or replace and with a plus sign, or things like that. So me think, why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick. Why is this important and why should you do it? My philosophy when note taking is your notes are never for just reading. They are supposed to be only for your reference whenever you're going back and studying the material. Whenever you're studying or using active recall, you're going to have to go back through your notes, and by not having these in full sentences, it's going to force your brain into filling it in and making a full sentence itself. And then in this way that you have to practice recalling it in your own words, this just prevents you from passively rereading your notes instead of actively engaging with the material. And another way to study while you're taking these notes to help you constantly quiz yourself on it is you can go through, you know, just say you have your topic, and then you've written down the information that would answer that question that you've made earlier and then you can look away and then you can ask yourself that question and then you can try to answer that with the checkpoints and then go through and check off the ones that you were able to get this way while you're studying the information actively you are also quizzing yourself at the same time when you go back to review it later you've already quizzed yourself on it once and this leads me into my second point which is to use active recall you should absolutely never do anything passively in this class it just doesn't work very well. Active recall is whenever you are actively recalling the information from your own memory. You're not rereading notes or highlighting or anything or anything like that. As I mentioned earlier, you should only be using your notes for reference. There are apps available like Quizlet or Anki that incorporate spaced repetition into this as well. But I truly believe that the best way is to teach somebody this information. If you can teach it to somebody else, then you absolutely know the material. So as I mentioned earlier, when you made your notes, you had your question and then you had your little bullet points of the information that answers that question. What you do is you will pick what you want to review and you will slide that across to your friend and then you will go through it and you will try to explain it to them. And as you are trying to explain it to them, you can have a little checklist off of the side and your friend can check that off for you as you go through it. And then to incorporate space repetition, you can make a study schedule with your friend you can put down when you first have reviewed a topic and when you want to go over it again as well. My third tip is that you want to be drawing as much as physically possible, especially from memory. Across anatomy and physiology, even like behind me with the tissues, there are so many different images and diagrams. You should be going through and you should be writing and labeling these diagrams. You should be drawing out processes with arrows and how they affect different parts and different processes in the body as well. And then you can also make concept maps one thing that I did a lot of when I was in anatomy and physiology to study was I would take my iPad or I would go to the library and I would go into one of the rooms with a whiteboard and I would constantly draw out. I would, if I had a certain diagram like, like the heart, I would take the heart and I would draw the heart. I would label the chambers and I would label the different vessels coming from it and everything like that. And my fourth tip is to use mnemonics. And oftentimes your professors or lab TAs will give you some mnemonics that you can use, but I definitely recommend making your own. One way that you can do this is you can take ChatGPT and you can take one of like your favorite shows and you can put it in and put in some information you want to make a mnemonic out of and it'll make it for you. I used The Office all the time, but you can use them for plenty of different things. You can use it for memorizing muscles. You can use it for memorizing bones. You can use it to memorize a process. 
And then tip number five is you definitely want to make sure that you're incorporating both forms of learning. You have to memorize things, but you also have to understand things. You can't just memorize in this class, and you also can't just understand things. When you're going through each system, you want to make sure you know its function, and you want to know the abnormal result when this function is not functioning correctly in this system, and what is the cause of the abnormal functioning, and if there's any consequences in other systems as a result of that as well. So everything is interconnected, and you want to pay attention to all of that. And I suppose my last tip is definitely stay consistent with it. You should definitely be doing an hour or two every day, most likely after class, and then you want to bump that up about a week before you have your exam. And then you want to make use of class. You want to go to class, your professor will tell you if, if things are going to be on or not on the exam. Sometimes we even give you tips on how you can learn a certain topic. And I also think that you should spend some time the night before class going over what your professor is supposed to go over in class the next day. That way, that class is more like a review for you. In my opinion, I, I really don't think that class, you should be learning something for the first time. I think that it should be moderately somewhat of a review for you. But these are just a few tips here. If there's any other questions or anything that you would like to know about studying anatomy and physiology, please comment down below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys might have and also make any other videos that you guys suggest. Like I mentioned, you can find all my study guides that I used while I was in this class. Uh, the link is in my bio to that. But that's exactly how I got an A in both undergrad and graduate school for anatomy and physiology. I hope these tips helped. I would absolutely also be interested in making videos on certain types of concepts or going over chapters um, like anatomical terminology or any sort of cardiovascular physiology that you guys might have. Uh, definitely let me know. I'd be more than happy to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing if you'd like to see more anatomy and physiology content. I also do book reviews and just overall, I'd want to make sure that I help you guys become as successful of a student as you can be. Thank you guys again for watching and have a good one.